straight 46 seconds for I detonate I can die still send these messages from heaven's gates let us pray the flow is omnipotent ferocious as a locust for these crops in other words I'm focused on the guap had to give since I broke about the box and they the type to stroke a nigga cock and host to go into the top Content with being parents in the game apparently they lame type to rock a nigga chain for popularity and fame I'm a square with the presence of a bear. Tell these niggas beware. The wisdom of a now dropping pellets over snares. A predator to parasites. I bury mice in pairs. Paranormal poetry to potency was scared. Rapper shitless. Last nigga had a vision of me floating up his stairs. Left them soaking in his tears. Hear the flow that I be pouring. It provoking niggas' tears like one for the money, two for the flow, three to get ready, homie, four, let's go. We go one for the money, two for the flow, three to get ready, homie, four, let's go. The spin skills been ill since big wheels and kids' meals. Flow deep to repeat it, you need fish gills. Big worm when I chip urn. Mine is the drip perm and shower cap. Bound to snap whenever I flip words like acrobats. Play the cuts like alley cats and bandage raps. I kick a rhythm like hacky sack. Imagine that. Flow stand out like fifth wheels on Cadillacs. For the right price, I battle rap a handicap. Snap the back of a rap cat with scattered tats. He more concerned with fashion than trying to master rap. Rather lean on methazine and grab a platinum plaque. That's a fact. So I move this music like I traffic crack all around my habitat. I'm on they ass like a fanny pack. Flow hot as candle wax. Guaranteed to feel defeat like a sandal strap, nigga, huh? He go one, one for the money, two for the flow, three to get ready, homie, four, let's go. He go one, one for the money, two for the flow, three to get ready, homie, four, let's go. Hey, thank you, thank you. In the song Jansport, you talk Good. about having a message that, that you or setting out with the record to maybe say something kind of specific. Yeah. What what kind of message is it that you feel like it's important to talk about for you? I think in a place like Portland is so first and foremost, in a place like Portland, which is like seventy nine percent white, I think it's important that the black narrative is put is put in that as well. And I just want people to gain perspective from that as well. So it really was about growing up black and overcoming things and just having people have a look into what we go through. Some of us, I can't say everybody goes through what I went through, but some of us. Can you ask that shit again? <laughs> I don't think I answered that fully. But. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I guess it's sort of just what message did you want to convey with the record? And it sounds like you're talking yeah. about you, you want to share a story that is like yeah. your own. So... The album, the name Concrete Dreams comes from, so if you've seen the cover before, there's a little black girl on the front, and she there's an outline drawing of like a body that you see at a homicide scene, but inside of that, that uh, outline is uh, like stars, the universe, galaxy, so the little black girl represents innocence, and then the, the chalk outline body represents reality of what's around that person. And then inside is the galaxy, which is like dreaming. So it's like dreaming beyond your circumstances. That's what really what the album is about. Is the the scene here in the Northwest the hip hop scene? Mm -hmm. Is is it predominantly white as well? Uh, nah. there, no. Uh -uh. But it's it's. Are the audiences? The audiences are pretty white? white. I think that's normal. <laughs> I think that's normal all across the nation. Mostly. That's, that's probably true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, things are just more accessible. I feel like. Things are less accessible as far as ticket prices and things for that, like the bigger artists, for people who may come from a higher socioeconomic background. Sure. They tend to be white a lot of the time. When you're speaking predominantly to a group of white people, yeah. is it, what what do you want white audiences to hear in your music? Do you do you think okay. about it in, in those terms? It's kind of a, yeah, always, it's a pretty man. loaded question, but yeah. I think, man, before I'm a rapper, I'm a human, so I just want people to understand things on a human level. Like when they listen to songs like Inner City Tantrum, I want them to ask the question, why? I just want people to be able to ask questions and be able to learn and also take away from that music and go talk to people in real life 
and try to empathize with other people in real life. You know what I mean? But I don't make it for people to have empathy, but it's for people to look into and learn from. Right. Well, you rap a lot about some pretty heavy topics. You you rap yeah. about money, about <laughs> about culture. I mean, and when I say money, I don't mean like you rap about having a lot of money. I mean, you rap about actual economics, yeah. socioeconomics. Um, you rap about respect and, and sort of like real, realness, authenticity. Yeah. Uh, do you consider yourself a political rapper? No, nah, I, consider, I consider myself a human who's living and deals with different experiences and I talk about them. Yeah. It, it may be political to somebody who may not go through it, but for me, it's reality. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Do you feel like right now in 2017, it's easy for people to view things through a political lens, maybe even more so than they would have when you put the record out last year? Uh, I think so with the piece of shit we got in office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know everybody probably won't agree with that, but that's how I feel. Fuck it. I for real. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's a... Uh, I mean, it's forced us to engage back into politics more so than we have. I think with, yeah. I, I can speak for black people. Uh, I can't speak for every black person, but this is how I see it. I feel like when Obama became president, a lot of us fell asleep when it had to, with, with things that had to do with politics because we thought, oh, it's good. You know what I mean? Sure. We wasn't thinking ahead to be like, ah, this shit can happen. <laughs> and yeah. it's all politics. It ain't really about color really like that. It's about, to me, poor and rich. Right. At the end of the day. All right, guys. Let's hear it from Mike Capes. Dre Slaps here in the Lucky Barn. Thank you for being here, guys. Thank you. Go buy some merch. For real. Follow me. More to come.